All right, now let's talk about degrees of freedom. So looking in a sketch, go back to this guy that we pulled in from AutoCAD. If you look at this and, and you kind of find where the missing pieces are, whenever you look at a sketch, Inventor is giving you some feedback on what you need in order to fully constrain that sketch. So if you look in the bottom right hand corner, it's telling me there are four dimensions needed to fully constrain this sketch. And you might look through this and think, no way, everything's got a dimension on it. Everything's everything's good. Now, one way you can check that there's multiple ways to do this. But one of the ways you can check it is you can turn on all of your constraints. So across the bottom of Inventor, when you're in the sketch mode, you have six different status bar icons. And uh, the second icon allows you to show all constraints. And that basically turns on the glyph on top of every object that has a constraint associated with it. So as you hover around each one of these, it highlights the corresponding object that the constraint exists for. So this is one way of diagnosing and, and finding maybe pieces of geometry that are not constrained and, and need to be. <clears throat> the other option is to look at degrees of freedom. So second from the right, kind of looks like a four-way lug wrench and a light bulb. This is the degrees of freedom status icon. When I click on this, it turns on all these red arrows. And there's a lot of red arrows in here. You've got some red arrows that are two directions. So if I zoom in a little bit, you got this guy right here, which basically means this horizontal line can move up and down. Then you've got a four-way arrow, which means that point can move in all directions or, or both directions, uh, X and Y. Then you've got the rotational arrows, which basically says this horizontal line can pivot or rotate around. So anytime I see a rotational arrow, step one for me is to put a vertical or horizontal constraint on that object. So if I come in here and I put a horizontal constraint on my top line segment, you'll notice that 95% of the degrees of freedom disappeared. That one constraint took care of the bulk of that movement. Well, why? If I come back and I look at my constraints, it's because this one object is parallel to this one. And man, does this one have a lot of constraints. So most of the objects in this sketch are associated with this bottom horizontal line segment. So that's why this one got all of them to move and, and reconstrain. Now, I've got a few left that I need to take care of. So for something like this, maybe collinear between those two. Try that again. Didn't grab it. Collinear between. Oh, wrong one. That's, co that's coincident. Try it again. Collinear between these two lines. That took care of those degrees of freedom. And then horizontal alignment between the center point of that circle and the center point of that circle. Now, if I look down the bottom right, you'll notice I don't see any degrees of freedom. But if I look in the bottom right, it says one dimension needed. This can happen sometimes when you pull in geometry from AutoCAD where it may not show a, a movement or a degree of freedom. That particular point right there can move a little bit. So I'll do the same thing here put a horizontal constraint between those two points. And as soon as I get that sketch fully constrained, that's when Inventor tells me it's now fully constrained. It's not going to go anywhere. So that's a very quick way of diagnosing your sketches with degrees of freedom and showing and hiding all of the constraints. Also, whether or not you have show constraints turned on or turned off, when you select a piece of geometry, the various constraint glyphs that are associated with it will show up. So if I click on this one here, I'm getting all of these other constraints that are shown up. So you can show all of them or you can do it one at a time.